Alright, more is aught bullshit. It's like the nihilist. The shit is out there. And it's just shit. Um, so this guy, Wobble Wobble, um, posted my thing here, um, what I said in the video, and then he adds, Okay, all that you have said here seems to me that you did not recognize, fuck you, that it is the brain that perceives, well again, who cares, all of this which gives it realness. That That's, no. I mean, this argument that somehow the reality is created by us is crap. The reality is something we observe. Observation is not creation. Recognition is not creation. We're recognizing the condition of something. We're not creating its condition. Uh, and the fact that you have to have a brain is only contingent on the fact that you can't recognize its properties if you don't have any symbolic representation of it. Like if I put a rabbit in space, an iPod that hasn't been informed about the existence of sentience and feelings isn't going to understand the rabbit. It's not going to recognize the rabbit for what it really is. It's just going to see fur and choo-choo and it's not going to understand, or maybe eyeball, blink, blink. Um, but it's have no clue what's really going on, which is brain, sentience, blah, blah, blah. It's going to say brain, squishy thing that doesn't do anything, apparently. So the whole point is, it's the only argument I'm making about the, the obligation to have a, a context is the sense that you have to have a volume of information to be able to see things as they really are. And I'm just saying we have a volume of information. We understand consciousness happens in brains. We understand all this stuff so we can recognize it when it's happening. And the badness of badness is built into the badness. The word bad wouldn't mean anything if you liberated it from being bad. It's like hell doesn't mean anything if you don't have, if hell isn't fire and torture and awfulness. So if you take the awfulness out of something that's intrinsically awful um, and say it's, it's something we can't recognize, it's something built into some subjective conclusion, it isn't there, we don't recognize it, we make it up. No, we recognize it. We recognize bad has to be fixed. It's it. It's the it, the whole reason why there's an ought, is because it's it's not a perfect world. That's the very reason. If there was a perfect world, then there would be no reason to have an ought. There'd be no reason to do the math. The reason why you do the math is because there can be less negatives in the circumstance, less bad. Bad is the thing that has to be. Er that's like an error to a to a programming code. It's error. Its unacceptability is intrinsic. It can't be just accepted. It can only be accepted if there's no alternative. All right. Uh, oh, that's my... Okay. Uh, you expose the belief that... Expose the belief that truth exists as if it lies out there. No. I, I, I've said it so many times. The relationship is out there. The characteristics, the properties, the things that something is is out there and we recognize what it is. That's the is. We recognize that bad is bad. That bad requires correction. That bad is imperfect. Bad is error. We recognize it as destructive to the fundamental nature of the universe. Perfection is, you know, this sounds like a Star Trek episode, but yes, perfection is the perfect word. It's the ideal and anything that we accept short of that out of anything other than necessity is wrong, is ought to be corrected. Exterminate. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's out there. Uh, idle prior to the brain that perceives it. It's not idle. The suffering rabbit is suffering. <laughs> the, the badness is happening. There's nothing idle about it. Uh, the the point is is it's not going to get corrected until it's recognized by something that has arms and legs and can get into a space suit and go out and rest save the day. I contend that this is not completely true. Well, I don't even know what that means. I 
argue that I could not know the Earth and its relationship to other terrestrial objects without a brain to know it. Well, again, I don't care whether you know it. How does knowing that the rabbit is suffering change the circumstance at all? It doesn't. The only thing that changes the circumstances is whether there are aliens or something else that can affect the rabbit. And if they need to know how to fix the rabbit or, how, or that the rabbit's in distress. Obviously, they need to know that there's a problem before they're going to fix it rationally if they were thinking logically devices. You can't fix a problem if you didn't identify a problem. I could not know the pain of the other sentience is like uh, prehistorically. I could not know what the pain of other sentience is like prehistorically, uh, I don't know what that means, are now if my brain does not register pain. <clears throat> well, the, the, the fact that um, we, you could argue that we could create a device, okay, that would recognize it because we programmed it to recognize it. So that's not exactly true. You, you could program something to recognize it. But, I mean, that something wouldn't necessarily have to be sentient then because it had a prime directive that said, I can recognize when something's in distress and it has neural networks and neural networks need to be, I have to make sure it's comforted. And I know what comfort looks like, so I'll make it look like comfort. <laughs> you know, <laughs> anyway, I just kind of forced, the, it'll do the joker thing and just force a mechanical smile on its face. Um, I could not know the consequence of being hit by a car if my brain did not recognize a relationship between movement and the two relative masses. Well, again, you just keep talking about what you recognize, and it doesn't matter. Your recognition has nothing to do with the badness of the cat getting hit by a meteor, let's say. Let's just put the cat in space, and let's just hit it with a meteor. And now it's, uh, it cracks the jar, and it slowly suffocates. Um, that badness exists, whether you recognize it or not. The badness happens, fucker. And most importantly, I would not, I would never be able to recognize anything without a working memory. I, I, the, the fact that you have to be intelligent to act intelligently, duh. The fact that you have to have knowledge to be able to act on the knowledge, duh. But it doesn't change the reality. The reality exists regardless of whether you recognize it, regardless whether you're smart enough, regardless of any of that shit, the bad is still happening. If somebody is pushing a barrel into the Great Lakes and he doesn't know it has dioxin in it, it doesn't fucking matter. The dioxin's going to poison the water just the same. I find it unintelligible to claim that the truth is sitting out there. You find it unintelligible to say that badness only means bad if it has the negative sign on it, then you didn't accurately identify a circumstance correctly if you don't put the negative sign on there. And the fact that immediately, as soon as the negative sign gets put on it, it's anti-perfect, it's error, error must be corrected. You don't understand that simple logic. Okay, I have no help for you. I can't really make it any simpler than that. You don't think error to a system um, whatever I define error as, that it's the anti-ideal, uh, it's the anti-perfect, and it must be corrected by its intrinsic fundamental nature. Bad means nothing if you don't give it a minus sign, and the minus sign has to mean something. It can't mean plus, it has to mean minus. It has to be different than okay. Bad can't look just like okay. I'm just saying that as soon as you make it look different than okay, it's recognized as error. It's error. It has to be corrected. This is why I think there is no subject-object distinction. Well, I'm, I don't give a shit about this subject-object shit. Again, it has nothing to do with the truth. The truth doesn't need a fucking subject to sit there and say, I recognize the object. Truth is one and the same with the subject. Bullshit. There can be no truth without the subject. Fuck you. And likewise, there can be no subject without the truth. It's just bullshit, 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 bullshit. There was nobody doing this subject-object crap for billions of years on planet Earth, and the suffering happened just the fucking same. So this is just all a pile of shit uh, that you fucking assholes need to contemplate something for it to be a reality. Bullshit. All right, now to trick. Oh. 
you know, and the, the Brett Keen comment is right below that. I mean, this stupid cunt. You, you know, Brett, you can do whatever you want. I don't care. I mean, I'll just, you know, I'll just delete your comments if this is the kind of crap you're going to post because I don't really want to get into to inane conversations. Gary, why do you think there are so many rape advocates in atheism? Oh, you, oh, you mean anti-theism. So you're asking me, why do a bunch of non-theological people commit more crimes? Well, that's because they're immoral and stupid. So um, you're just going to tell me that all the stupid people are now atheists. And they're not really atheists, they're nihilists, they're a whole bunch of different things. But they're not, they're not atheists in the sense that they don't believe in evolution, or they don't believe in civilization, or they don't believe in right and wrong. That has nothing to do with atheism. And clearly, lots of people pretending to be Christians commit crimes all the, every day. And I say pretend to be Christians almost laughingly, because I think every Christian is pretending to be a Christian. I, there's no evidence of any of these assholes having any confidence in this God at all, or any confidence in the existence of hell. If I actually believed hell existed, I wouldn't even say the word fucking hell. <laughs> you know, I'd be cowering in a corner somewhere, making sure I didn't step on or say anything wrong. I certainly wouldn't recklessly be making YouTube videos, pronouncing myself as, uh, you know, some sort of uh, t uh, t uh, spokesperson for Jesus. That's the last fucking thing I'd goddamn do because I know why. Well, goddamn it, I'm going to say the wrong thing and fuck my game. I'd keep my goddamn mouth shut. I'd eat my porridge and wait for my goddamn salvation and try to stay out of goddamn trouble. So you show me the Christians doing that. I said, I'm sure there's some potato farmer somewhere, you know, basically doing that. <laughs> you know, anyway. <laughs> so, oh, Brett responded to my, why so many child molesters in Christianity and Islam? Because those fuckers are trash, Gary. Well, then that's my answer to you. There's trashy atheists, and then there's uh, uh, civilized atheists. There's people who belch in people's faces, and there's people who don't. That's the way the world works. There's assholes, and there's non-assholes. And to sit there and say that atheism makes people asshole is just a bullshit piece of propaganda. So, fuck that crap. Um, shove your insinuations, okay? Uh, it's, 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 um, you know, that kind of profiling or pigeonholing is just a cheap argument. So you want to make cheap arguments, go ahead. That's, that's your prerogative, but it doesn't make you a more credible person. All right, trick. The experience being objectively good or bad, positive or negative, dot, 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 I don't know, is entirely sufficient to denote ethical value. Right. Exactly. So once the value exists, the universe does the math, whether you like it or not. The math is inevitable. The math is unavoidable. The fact that the negative exists in the pool of positive, the poison exists in the pie, the poison must be extracted from the pie. The ought is automatic. Bad can't be bad if it doesn't create automatic. It must be removed, if possible. <sighs> Prior to any prescription. Again, prescription is inevitable. You can't avoid prescription. Prescription is merely doing the math. If I have, I mean, I don't have, this is idiotic. I have to write down something this stupid. If I have plus two, and I have a minus one, and I have a plus seven, and I have a minus 14, that's the reality. This is, now this is reality. It has this shit in it. Well, the net number, okay, is something like uh, minus uh, six. That's error six. That's imperfect six. That has to be fixed. There's no doubt about it. It's just as solid as the word bad. The word bad, if the word, if the word bad or negative, okay, the only way you can say that the prescription isn't solid is to say the fucking bad isn't solid. There's no other way to do the math. There's no way to reverse the equation if there's no realness to the number. So I'm just saying that if, if the value is real, the conclusion is real because there's no way to do it otherwise. There's no, there's no other solution to the math. Once you've done the variables, the math is over. All right, anyway. uh, not only does one not require the ought to denote that which is ethical or unethical, the ought is a, a, a statement, okay, recognizing the ethical truth. 
So I don't know how you could possibly say it doesn't denote. The word is inseparable from the circumstance. The circumstance creates the ought. The ought isn't something we make up. The ought is a, a recognition of the net negative number. <sighs> injecting into the ought, injecting in the ought into the description rather than after it allows people to dismiss the description itself as they denote the logical gap. I don't even know how, how the hell do I can make sense out of that. Injecting in the ought. Injecting in the ought. So we inject in the ought into the description um, uh, rather than after it. It's part of the description. Again, how can bad mean bad if, you, if it all of a sudden when I put an equal sign the bad goes away? Fuck. After it allows people to dis to dismiss the description itself as they denote the logical gap. Again, there's what logical gap? Bad is bad. Bad is error. Error must be corrected. Those are the is's. Game is over. The ought is automatic. Throwing the bed out with the bathwater and reverting to nihilism. Again. There's, you're the one, my accusation to you is you're doing that by saying the ought is ambiguous, unclear, and, and avoidable is saying the negative is avoidable, is saying the negative isn't really bad. The bad must not really exist if you can somehow make it go away by putting an equal sign. It doesn't go away. Um, all right. This is an extremely important topic that we need to make logically sound. Well, again, I'm, my exact argument to you is, is you're the one making it logically unsound. If the ought is unobligatory, unoblig then the values must be unobligatory. The only logical connection to derive an ought from an is is through a contingent if. Again, there's no if about bad. Bad isn't if bad is bad. That would be a silly thing to say. If negative is negative. If error is error. That's bullshit. There's no F. There's no, there, 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 there's no if. There's no contingency here. There's no other way to look at it. A negative is a negative. It isn't a negative if it's not negative, for fuck's sake. There is no reason one ought to be ethical. Well, of course, there is reason, and that's the whole point. There's no logical way to escape it. There's perfection. There's imperfection. Imperfection is not perfection. Uh, perfection is the, uh, if you're going to have two things, it's, it's intrinsically and fundamental to the circumstance that you pick that one of the things that the preferable state, which means I'm going to choose perfection rationally, that makes sense. So, yes, perfection is the preferable state. There, the, the argument is over. As long as you can believe it's reasonable for perfection to be the, the preferable state, then the, we're done with the, any conversation about any of it, because the rest of it's just math. There is no reason one ought to be ethical or ought to be reasonable or logical, well, <laughs> for that matter. Well, I'm just saying, of course, there is reason, because the negative won't get corrected by non-recognition or by irrational evasion. So, clearly... The error doesn't become an unerror, or it isn't prevented, or it isn't uncaused if you don't recognize it. So that's the obligation. Rather, these depend on contingent ifs. So you keep saying so. I don't see any contingent if in this equation at all. Once you recognize the bad can exist, it's a red number. Red numbers can't be allowed if they are preventable. That's the fundamental intrinsic truth. Uh, if one is not to be an unethical asshole who creates negative value, one ought to do that which is ethical. <sighs> I, that statement, again, could just be rewritten. If one is not to be error, one must correct error. If, if, if one sees error and one doesn't correct error, that's an error. Okay, if one, if one wants truth, one ought to be reasonable and logical. Well, <laughs> wants truth, um, the point is the truth is something we discover, we don't create it, it exists in the circumstantial reality, and all you're doing is describing it. 
and once you describe it, it's already built in to the description, to the definition of the terms. The definition of bad it creates the obligation that it must be corrected. Of course, someone like you and I think one ought to be ethical, reasonable, and logical. Well, again, I don't think it's a matter of their um, oughtness in the sense that certainly they ought to be, be um, they ought to be conformed to be able to do the math correctly. And I'm just arguing that you're giving them a way to evade doing the math correctly. Um, uh, but that is because these are very important to us. Well, now you're making it completely subjective, and you're saying that, oh, I subjectively think that it's important to be uh, to do math correctly, that somehow math can exist in a, in a circumstance where you do it incorrectly. And I would argue that you've completely destroyed the idea of what mathematics is or the whole concept of even recognizing the existence of the numbers if you're not going to weight them properly. So improper weighting of the numbers is an error in itself. It's intrinsically and fundamentally an inaccurate description of reality. So I'm just saying the math dictates the solution to the problem. Once you put the values in, the, the, the formula is done. It's over. The fact that we don't do math quickly is our problem. But the point is, is that it's as far as from a calculator's point of view, the answer is automatic. We want a world where we move away from negative value and towards positive. Uh, <clears throat> want again. It's not about my want. It's about a recognition of the truth. What does the truth demand? The truth demands that negatives be recognized as negative. You're not going to be able to recognize it as a negative if you somehow do math and come up with a non-ought uh, uh, when you put the equal sign. If you're not giving the math, if you're not giving the negative number any meaning in the formula, then you have not recognized the truth. You haven't honored the truth. You haven't come anywhere close to describing the truth accurately. If your product can be um, ir irrelevant to the, the uh, uh, components, then there's no such thing as rational math. We don't make the circumstance, and the circumstance loads the equation. There's no, again, you're, it's not uh, we don't have uh, a, a volition right to change the meaning of plus, to change the meaning of the value equation, the function of it. You can't say it's, it's not obligatory to consider 7 minus 7, um, you know, more negative than plus 4. And that you have to recognize that the thing on the other side of the equal sign is now required to be a negative number which means bad is your solution, which means you need to correct the formula, you need to correct the, the constituents in the formula, you need to plus my action that will correct, and then I can get to a zero or some positive number. I, I would certainly argue positive numbers are out of the question, <laughs> positive solutions, but clearly less negative solution is what we're after less negative weight as a product. So, um, but yeah, they're to, you're completely destructive to the, um, the fact that the reasoning is real, merely a duplication of the truth of the reality. The rationality and the logic is an obligation of recognizing the properties of the components of the equation. If you're not, if you're, if, if you're allowed to fuck with the product, then you have fucked the, the components.